Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we're going to be actually taking a look at a very interesting modded truck. Now, this is a Man SX44 6x6, and it's a very long cab over 6x6. Now, this is meant to sort of slot into the standard campaign, but be a sort of 6x6 slash heavy. So we're going to go ahead and test it out here on the Proving Grounds map, the Summer Proving Grounds. We're also going to run through all the customization features as well as take a more in-depth look at the truck itself. Now, looking at it from the exterior here, you can see, especially if we go into free cam, that there's a lot of detail going on here. You can see the lines going straight to the brakes. You can see the heavy detail on the axle, the shocks, the springs. You can see some lines coming back in, back into the back of the cab right here. There's a lot going on. You have a modeled uh, drive line underneath the truck. There's like, there's fully animated, you know, fully animated just about everything. I mean, you can even see they've got like fully detailed and textured lug nuts. So there's a lot of depth and detail that went into this truck. Now, also looking on the interior, it's pretty basic in here, but it gets the job done. Now, obviously, I don't know if that's like let me see if that's final detail or if we switch into the okay yeah no it just wasn't rendered because we wasn't uh, because we weren't in interior view but it looks good i mean you've got your standard like cloth seats you've got modeled seat belts you've got modeled switches on the dash for the lights the ac controls you've got actually a fully modeled dash as well like a fully modeled dashboard let's see if it lights up it does not but the whole truck shakes and roars to life and actually has pretty good get up and go for something that's this big and heavy. So now let's go into the customization. Now, engine wise, we have three different uh, man truck engines. We have the D2866 R6, the D2868 V8, and the D2876 R6, which the V8 will give us the best power to weight rating of a S plus, which is a lot for a truck like, for a truck like this. And we have, obviously, our three different gearbox options are balanced, our high range, and our off-road. We'll start with the off-road, and then we'll go to the high range later, when we do the bridge jump. But suspension-wise, we have active, which is really nice. We have stock, and we also have raised. We're going to start with raised, and then we'll go to the active a little bit later. Now, you have a couple of different tire size options. You have 48, and you have 52. Let me see if the 52 will fit with the active. Because if it will, no, it will not. Okay, so that's a little bit of a bummer. I was hoping that the active would allow you to fit the 52s, and I would be all, like, up for it if it did. But it's kind of frustrating, not gonna lie, that the active doesn't allow you to use the 52s. So, now you can go up to a 52 in the Man SX tires, which is good. But, let's see. Hmm. They are apparently average in everything. But... Hmm, let's see, MHS-1, let's just honestly start with the 52-inch Man SX tires, I mean, I, I don't understand why they wouldn't be good, so we'll do the advanced winch, spare wheel, oh, it literally fits right into that little holder right there, that's pretty cool, frame add-on wise, we have a standard flatbed, van body add-on, and the van body add-on looks perfectly matched to this truck, it looks great, maintenance frame add-on, sideboard bed, fuel tank, which heavily compresses the suspension, and saddle high and saddle low. So as you can see, it doesn't really have any uh, proprietary add-ons that are dedicated to this truck, but the add-ons that it does have, even though they are from the standard game, do actually suit the truck really well and I think are a good representation of what the truck can do. So what I would probably use it for is as a support truck, and that's why I'm going to go ahead and throw the maintenance frame add-on on it. Now, we have two different wheel options. I Ooh, that actually looks really cool, but I kind of like that. I don't know. Now, the only downfall of this thing is the fact that you can't change the color and you can't do any interior customization. I do feel like that's a little bit of an oversight and I would really like to see this thing updated with some color options and some interior customization. But without any further ado, let's take it out of the garage and see how it drives and see if it's something that we would use on a day-to-day -day basis in standard map gameplay. Now, with this engine, it seems to actually have some pretty good power, some pretty good get up and go. And, obviously, I don't think it'll be able to tow trailers with this particular... Well? Yeah, it, it it can tow a bunch of trailers, just not with the maintenance frame out on attached. Which, I mean, that's fine. That's just kind of, you know, that's a normal thing. That's how the game works. I just wanted to see if they had put in any sort of, like... Any sort of code to kind of bypass that. Although, it would look pretty weird, admittedly, because it... 
you know, it, it, the back of this kind of curves down below where the trailer hitch would be, so I'm glad that they didn't do that. Now, as I went around that corner back there, I couldn't help but notice how flat this thing stayed, even though we went around that corner pretty dang quickly. It is a good-looking rig, though. It's definitely a rig that you could imagine seeing out in the wilderness, out in the middle of nowhere, and just, like, properly getting to work. Like, really putting in work out in the wilderness, out in the middle of nowhere, and just making sure that the job it was assigned to do got done and got done properly. Now, let's give it a bit of a hill climb test. I'm actually going to leave it in high range. We're going to go at the hill a little bit of a at a little bit of a diagonal because we do have a little bit of a wonky approach angle here. Okay. Yeah, I was a little worried about that. I was a little worried about that. What was I worried about? I was worried about the back of the maintenance frame out on getting caught on the ground trying to go up the, uh, I'm gonna turn off that beacon real quick. But I was worried about it getting caught on the ground going up the hill climb. And to be honest, I kind of figured it would. And that pretty much confirmed my suspicion there. But let's try it in the mud. And I'm curious as to how it'll do because the menu described these tires as being average in all categories. But so far, they don't seem to be doing too bad. Although they are definitely getting a little spinny even in the... Oh, God, our dude is, like, bouncing around like nobody's business in there. This thing must have a really rough suspension. Which, to be fair, I can understand why it would because of the type of truck that it is. It's certainly not going to be a Mercedes S-Class. Now... You can definitely tell as you drive around in this thing that it was meant to interface with the stock game trucks and not feel overpowered. And I think they pulled that off pretty well. I mean, I know that the people that really enjoy realistic mods are going to enjoy this truck. The only thing that I could see people maybe disliking about this truck is the lack of color customization and the lack of interior customization. But at the same time, if that's, you know, something that you're really, really into, there are a lot of other trucks that could satisfy um, that particular desire for you. So, I mean, I think it's a very good truck. I think it definitely has a place here. And it's interesting to see a truck this big and a truck this long as a 6x6 instead of an 8x8. Now, interestingly, though, you could totally envision this thing having two front axles. At least I know I could. I know I could look at this thing and go, oh, yeah, it could totally do with a couple of extra axles up front. Now, also... For a tire that is considered only average in the mud, it's just doing better than average. I don't know if it's just because of the fact that it's tall, like it's a 52-inch tire, which is very big. But again, remember, they listed this compound as purely just average in mud, and I'm not so inclined to believe that it's just purely average anymore. I mean, it definitely gets down and moves when it's going through the mud, and it's very reliable, dependable, and seems to be seems to be a very well usable tire i mean it seems to be a tire that can you know get get into the mud do its job and get out you know so let's see if oh boy until you get to that point now let's see if we switch a couple things up let's see if we can go to a heavy single off-road heavy single mud tires that's like a msh tire Okay, so after swapping to that, it actually does, you know, pick up and go in the same gear. So that's pretty interesting to compare those side by side. Switching up to that tire, you know, wow, that's a that's a tremendous improvement. Like, when we threw those on, it took off. So I can definitely say that the stock tires are fine until you get into the really deep stuff. And then once you get into the really deep stuff, you're going to have to be looking for some other options. Now, that is a good way to figure out which tires are best. However... We still have yet to figure out if it can make it through rough terrain because we haven't attempted the dips obstacle yet. And absolutely, you can rest assured, there will be a bridge jump at the end of this video. So, yeah, do, be well aware that for those of you bridge jump enthusiasts, there will be a bridge jump at the end of the video. But make sure you watch all the way through and stay tuned. Now, the lights are okay. They're nothing crazy. They're nothing to write home about. But they, they do work. They're lights. I mean, and I know that I don't mean to sound, uh, like, judgmental of them or, you know, insulting in any way. But they work really well and they're nothing special. So, now, let's see if we can attempt that, uh, that dips obstacle. I do like the interior. The interior is very well done. Very high quality. Very well done. I love the addition of the seat belts. The seat belts are a nice little quality addition. Let's ease it into... 
Oop. The only time we might run into a slight issue is if we have a wheelbase, uh, sort of a wheelbase problem where it gets high centered or hung up. But if you come at these obstacles with just a little bit of angle, you'll be okay. And that's what I'm noticing as I go through here is that if you come at it with a little bit of angle, just a little bit, you will be completely okay. You just have to make sure that you have that angle. And then if you do, everything will be, everything will be good. All, all will be well. Come on. Come on. There you go. Making my way through. Come on. It can do it, but it makes you work for it. It absolutely makes you work for it. Yeah, it, it absolutely makes you work for your run through here. And I mean, the, the, the feeling of realistic challenge is absolutely there. I could see this truck actually being a popular mod for people that both like to play realistically and also people that like to play with a wheel. I could definitely, like, for the, uh, the SnowRunner wheel crowd, I could absolutely see this being a highlight for them. So, with that all being said and done, let's go ahead and... Hmm. We'll just leave these tires on. That's fine. We'll leave this engine, and we'll go to the high-range gearbox. And let's see if we can take away some weight by going to, the like, just a base, basic flatbed. We got an eight-speed in here now, boys. Y'all know where we're going. We're headed for that bridge jump. The bridge jump is on its way, or I should say we are on our way to it. But, you know, grammar and English aside, oh god, this thing is fast with the highway box. Whoa! Oh my god, we just like literally drifted all the way into that corner. That's hilarious. The fact that it's willing to do that in... Whoa! Holy smokes, okay, yeah, if you want this thing to be... That's the thing, is this thing felt like definitely on the slower end and definitely on the more balanced end, you know, with the off-road box, but when you throw the highway box this thing, that's an animal. It takes off. Let's go, 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 go. Oh, jeez, I can't see where I'm going. Up, up! Oh, no! Whoa! I couldn't see where I'm go where I was going, and then when I went to switch to the interior view, it put my camera literally, like, on the back side of the headrest in the seat, and so I still couldn't see where I was going. But regardless, I am very impressed at how much faster this thing got once we put the highway box in it. So that's definitely something to consider if you're going to be using this mod. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Do you like this truck? Do you not like this truck? Will you be using it? Will you not be using it? And if you're new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on so you never miss a video or a stream. That's all for this video, and I'll see you guys next time.